We have one non-league survivor in the fourth round. Vauxhall Conference leaders, Kidder Minister, Graham Molnar's team today have a sellout 7,000 crowd packing their Ag Agborough Stadium to see if Preston North End can be dispatched in the same way Birmingham City were sent packing in the third round. Gerald Sinstadt reporting this time. The FA Cup can have a curious effect on people. The sense of a special occasion generates a desire for novelty in the build-up, and not only among the fans. Remember Cambridge and the cold showers. Talking of healthy living, remember the Kingstonian diet. A double egg, sausage, chips, mushroom. Remember Farnborough going down the meditation road. Remember Knox County just going downhill. Well, this week, Kidderminster Harriers sought to keep their cup adventure afloat by taking to the brine baths in preparation for their fourth round tie against Preston. It is a break away from training and that maybe is not a bad thing, you know. I think you're getting into January, February and uh, I know we're only part-time and we're a bit restricted in the training we can do, but we have played a lot of football matches and I think a night like this is something different and just breaks everything up. In the third round, for the first time in their history, Kidderminster knocked out Birmingham City at St Andrews, emphasising that their position at the top of the Vauxhall Conference is not false. It's all a tribute to the acumen of Graham Allner, who survived 11 seasons as Harriers manager on a philosophy of tactics and sympathy. My chairman says I'm the Marjorie Proops of non-league football, uh, that I put my arm around players too much and get involved in their, in their problems, but, uh, I mean, my belief is to get the best out of players you've got to, got to understand them you've got to get inside them and um, I've always tried to do that and uh, this is a relatively new team and uh, you can't do it in five minutes it does take a little bit of time so um, my, my method is to try and get to know my players as men. Two players with contrasting backgrounds illustrate Allner's shrewdness. He's kept Paul Davis happy here for 11 years just over 500 games nearly 250 goals and he's made John Purdy feel wanted after a career that had seen him drift away from seven previous clubs. Purdy started at Arsenal. He's only 26 still, but he scored a goal against Birmingham that any striker would envy. The only game that I'd ever played in front of a, a crowd uh, sort of on the same level or even better was at Old Trafford. I played for Oxford. I froze completely and I was determined that day that it wouldn't happen again. Scored a fairly decent goal. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I was quite pleased with it. Among the highlights of Paul Davis's long career at Kidderminster are the goals he scored to win the FA Trophy in 1987. I think there's been a couple of times when I've probably felt uh, he's done his job for the club and it was time to move on. Um, but he's come back strongly each time and uh, this last six, 12 months, he's been absolutely magnificent, probably playing the best football in his time at the club. I've had probably as good a career as I could have outside the game. I've played for the England non-league side, I've played at Wembley and represented Middlesex Wanderers and played all over the world if you like. So I'm very happy with the career I've had. When you look back, do you feel that the league career has passed you by or can you still make it? Um, I think I probably had my chance and it's gone. I'd, you know, I'd welcome a chance again, but um, it, you know, it would be no good for me to go into the third or second division really at this stage. I'm quite comfortable in my life, I've got a decent job and coupled with the, uh, the Kidderminster Harriers part of it, everything's quite nice. I'm going for Kidderminster, a great result against Birmingham in the last round. Full house today, great atmosphere in there. I think they'll do it. The select band. Supporters of the Vauxhall Conference leaders steamed into Kidderminster, hoping to see Preston steamrolled. And they were not disappointed. The Harriers John Purdy was the most gifted player on view, and it was his teasing run that set up the game's only goal. Scorer Delwyn Humphreys, who then produced a victory roll celebration, scored of Peter Beagrid. Kidderminster's manager, Graham Allner, says he assumes his team won't win the cup. But right now, they're certainly enjoying it a whole lot more than Preston. You have your dreams be, you know, before the beginning of the season, but uh, you don't think they're going to come true. And on a day like this, I mean, it was a very hot. We knew what they were going to play like, and we always knew we got to defend well, which the lads, they were brilliant at the back. But you, 
we, we always knew if we got one, you know, one or two chances, we'd put them away. And luckily enough, I was the one who got the chance and put it away. Plenty of either oars in the draw. Only seven teams definitely through. Kidderminster are number 11. Manchester United, number 6. Cardiff City are number 13. They beat Manchester City, of course, yesterday. Time to go for that draw and join the chief executive of the Football Association, Graham Kelly. Graham. Thank you very much. Well, the home teams will be drawn by Mr Gordon McKeague, the chairman of the Challenge Cup Committee, and the away teams by Sir Bert Millichip, the chairman of the Football Association. Number 13. Cardiff City. Number 3. We'll play Newcastle United or Luton Town. Number nine. Oldham Athletic or Stoke City? Number seven. We'll play Plymouth Argyle or Barnsley? <clears throat> Number eleven. That's Kidderminster Harriers. Number twelve. Play Notts County or West Ham United? Number one, Wolverhampton Wanderers. Number eight, play Ipswich Town. Number 16, Bolton Wanderers or Arsenal. Number two, we'll play Aston Villa. Number 15, Oxford United or Leeds United? Number 10. Play Chelsea or Sheffield Wednesday? Number 4. Wimbledon? Number 6. We'll play Manchester United. And number 5. Stockport County or Bristol City? Number 14. We'll play Charlton Athletic or Blackburn Rovers. That concludes the draw. The ties will be played on the 19th, 20th and 21st of February. Well, not many smiles uh, there at Carrow Road from the Manchester United players. I don't think they'll be too pleased with that draw at Wimbledon, or at least Wimbledon are always the team that most people, I think, prefer to avoid. Kidderminster Harriers against Notts County or West Ham. Will they play that at the Agra Stadium? That's the thing that immediately strikes you. And then Bolton Wanderers or Arsenal must settle their differences tomorrow. And of course then Aston Villa face the third away game of this FA Cup so far. That's the scene here at White Hotel David. in London. So now United uh, away once again. This was the reaction as the Vauxhall Conference leaders learned they'll face the winners of the Notts County West Ham replay. Kidderminster are the first non-league side to reach the last 16 in nine years. And now let's have a look at the weather. A dry and black... The first non-league team to reach this stage of the competition since Telford United in 1985. The moment when Kidderminster Harriers made club history a place in the FA Cup fifth round time for Delwyn Humphreys to go through his circus act. 24 hours later, he was in front of the Supporters Club television with his family, a few friends and supporters as the draw for the next round was made. Number 11. <laughs> Number 12. By Notts County or West Ham United? You hope that Man United or Villa or the, you know, one of the big ones, but it's just nice to be in the fifth round for the first time. This morning, manager Graham Allner was in his porter cabin office browsing newspapers that had found every conceivable angle on Kidderminster Harriers, delighted that their next FA Cup match will definitely be played at their home ground. We're very conscious that we're the flag bearers for the conference and for non-league football come to that, and uh, there's a lot of talk about the, the gap getting closer between the part-timers and the full-timers. And um, I think uh, we're proving that, that that gap is getting smaller and smaller.
people here that have been supporting the club since the 1920s and waiting for an FA Cup run. There were more tears again here on uh, uh, Saturday night, tears of joy, and uh, uh, from people you wouldn't imagine that would have a tear left in their eye, they, they got more to show. As a cup tie, the Preston game was significant for one thing. Harry has played the better football and deserved another slice of glory. John Purdy, the match winner against Birmingham, turned goal maker. Del Humphreys in the right place at the right time. He almost got another one three minutes later, his header hitting the bar. Preston nearly equalised, but Norbury's miss summed up their day. We, we always knew if we got one, you know, one or two chances, we'd put them away. And luckily enough, I was the one who got the chance and put it away. Nine years ago, another Midlands side, Telford United, were the last non-league team to reach the fifth round, losing 3-0 at Everton after the bravest of fights. Harriers feel they could go one better and backflip their way into the history books. Confirmation then of that Kidderminster home draw in the fifth round. Wolves will be delighted to face Ipswich of the Premiership at Molyneux. Villa on their travels again, either at Bolton or at Cup Holders Arsenal, and Stoke with a possible home draw with Plymouth or Barnsley. Well, the chairman himself dreams of another Kidderminster upset. I suppose the dream again must be those twin towers at Wembley, but I suppose you must keep dreaming yet for a little longer. You must have a chance, though, against West Ham. I think we have, to be quite honest. Uh, on the day, you know, the, the old adage, 11 against 11, and, you know, the conditions, and on the day, the lads are quite capable of doing it. I've always uh, wished for a good cup run, but it's gone beyond even that now. I mean, to get to the fifth round is a dream come true. The players have grown in hero status with each passing round. There's almost an expectation now of a good performance and a good result. West Ham are in for a tough time. If West Ham come to us just thinking they're going to win the game simply because they're a premiership club, I think they'll be in for the shock. I mean, I should think they'll have a more professional attitude than that. If they just come thinking they're going to win because they are West Ham, I think we uh, could catch them. Tomorrow, 8,000 supporters will fill Agbra, but all over the country, millions who don't even know where Kidderminster is will be willing another famous FA Cup upset. The news of that match, an exclusive action. Lee Kidderminster Harriers. Tomorrow, 8,000 will jam into this tiny ground for the biggest game in the club's history when they face West Ham of the Premiership in the FA Cup fifth round. It's been the year of the underdog, so could there be another shock here tomorrow? A week in the life of the FA Cup giant killers, the big freeze as Agbra shaped up for West Ham and the warm glow of the Kidderminster public. This was a meet the town night at a local leisure centre, back to basics in every sense, coaching for youngsters and autographs by the thousand. This has been a cup tale of the unexpected and the Harriers have won friends old and young. Now they hope that lightning strikes for the third time. Everybody's really enjoying it, all the uh, publicity we're getting. And uh, like you say, uh, hopefully there's more to come. I mean, realistically, they've got to be big favourites, but we really think that we've got a chance. I mean, I saw them myself on Saturday, and uh, with the greatest respect, uh, I wasn't over impressed. It was the win over Birmingham City that really put the Harriers in the spotlight. The Vauxhall Conference leaders lapped it up. But many suspected the next match with Preston would be tougher. Harriers outplayed them. Dale Humphreys win a scant reward for their domination. Now West Ham. Surely it couldn't happen again. They're coming here with a lot to lose, to be quite honest. Uh, they haven't been performing particularly well in, in the league. I've seen them myself on one occasion recently. Um, they do tend to, to struggle a bit going forward. And perhaps we've got players that can do a better job in our forward line than, than they've got in theirs. In London, West Ham have been going through their training motions. It's not been the best of seasons for them, and they readily admit that Kidderminster is a step into the unknown. It's one of those most worrying games you get in football, really. Um, you're in a, a no-win situation. Uh, even if you win, you're expected to win, and expected to win quite well. So they've got nothing to lose. They know that uh, uh, they're expected to go out, so they can relax, and they can just give it all they've got. So the Harriers fly the underdog flag with the Midlands and most neutrals on their side. Joining me now live is uh, Graham Warner, the Kidderminster Marriers. Matt Manager, looking very calm and relaxed, Graham. Is that how you feel? 
Yeah, it's gone well this week, and uh, I don't think we've got anything to be nervous about. Uh, we're the underdogs, we've got nothing to lose. I think the pressure's on West Ham, so uh, uh, other than getting the, everything ready, uh, we've, you know, we've all been quite relaxed about it, and uh, the players certainly were relaxed last night. It's going to be mayhem here tomorrow with 8,000 jamming in, isn't it? Um, I, w I hope not, because <laughs> I think we've worked very hard to get the, the day organised right, and uh, I think uh, anybody at the Preston game would say that 7,000 got in here quite comfortably and uh, the other thousand are going up uh, in this temporary stand. So, um, as long as everybody behaves themselves, there shouldn't be any problem. What instructions to the players tonight? Early night with a, a glass of fizzy water, something like that? Well, I've been reading <laughs> reports in the papers that uh, I've been saying they can do what they like, so uh, if I start changing that, they'll, they'll get confused. No, they're grown-ups, they, they you know, know what to do, they're responsible lads, they know what's required of them tomorrow, so uh, it doesn't need me telling them how to behave the night before a game. Uh, it's meant a lot to this town. What would it mean to, to beat a premiership site? Everything. I think, uh, you know, we, we obviously that's the dream, but uh, the reality is going to be much tougher than that. But if it did uh, if it did happen, I don't know if we could cope with another <laughs> few weeks uh, that we've had lately. Um, but we'd do our best and uh, we, we'd enjoy it. OK, Graham. Thanks very much indeed. ...team to actually reach the fifth round of the FA Cup since the war. And the previous four... Colchester, Yeovil, Blythe Spartans and Telford all fell at this hurdle. Gary Richardson reporting. Kidderminster Harriers could be on the brink of rewriting the FA Cup record books all because of Delwyn Humphreys winning goal against Preston in the fourth round. Quite how he can top these celebrations if they defeat West Ham remains to be seen. The build-up for this afternoon's game began on Monday with a visit to a local sports centre for a photo call and to meet some of the club's younger fans. If Kidderminster do win, they'll become the first non-league side to reach the quarter-finals in modern times. Others have tried and failed, starting with Colchester in 1948. Their trip to the seaside in the fifth round wasn't a pleasant one, having beaten Bradford in the fourth round. And now to Essex for the fourth round giant killer. Non-league Colchester makes soccer history by beating second division Bradford. A long shot by left winger Bill Elliott, whose goal beat Arsenal, finds the back of Colchester's net. The Southern League team hit back, and Bob Curry scores a brilliant equaliser. In a goal mouth scramble, Curry turns up to score with a hard drive. Bradford are in fighting mood now. The Yorkshire team's equaliser comes through an Ainsley header. Second half sees Colchester going all out for that vital goal. Fred Cutting, a market gardener, scores the winner with a first-time shot. Yeovil caused one of the biggest upsets ever, defeating Sunderland in 1949, but against Manchester United they lost 8-0. The biggest crowd of the day, over 80,000, was present at Manchester to see the cup holders meet Yeovil, the Somerset giant killer. Manchester United kicked off, Yeovil in dark shirts with light sleeves. I'm afraid the Somerset team had rarely met its match this time, and the cup holders had plenty of shooting practice. They scored four times in the first half. Rowley got the first, Soon afterwards, he got another. And now his hat trick. Ah, no, Yeovil, you don't go to Wembley via Manchester. Almost 30 years later, the focus was on the North East, not Newcastle or Sunderland, but the all-singing, all-dancing Blythe Spartans. For them, though, heartbreak at Wrexham. They conceded a last-minute equaliser, having taken the lead. Come to Johnson, and he cuts it in! Johnson turns to the delighted Blythe supporters, having been presented with a kick. Can't write with the kick. Roberts hounding in on it. Then in 1985, Telford made their bid for a place in the last eight with an impressive run. The Alliance Premier League side knocked out four league teams. Lincoln, Preston, Bradford and Darlington. But against Everton, who went on to reach the final in that year, they were never in the hunt and they were beaten 3-0. 
So what chance Kidderminster taking that extra step into the quarter-finals? So far, they've already beaten two league sides. Today, their Agra ground will be bursting at the seams, a temporary stand's been built, and they're expecting a crowd of around 8,000. It's been open all hours in the ticket office this week. The club normally average crowds of around 2,000. Stadium manager Roger Barlow, who does just about everything at the club apart from play, has never known anything quite like it. It's been a very hectic three months since uh, early part of December when we reached the third round. It's, uh, it's been non-stop. We've only had time off for Christmas and uh, it's been seven days since then, a week. But although they're on the verge of history, the town of Kidderminster hasn't exactly been gripped by cup fever. Some shops have been trying to whip up the atmosphere and there's no squashing the enthusiasm of Alan Watkins, who's been following Kidderminster for 35 years. It's, it's in the blood. Uh, I've supported them for, as, I, as you said, 35 years. So you, you only support one team in my, my way of thinking. You know, Harry is my team, and that's it. You've had your display up since the beginning of the FA Cup run. Yeah. You've said you'll only take it down when uh, Kidderminster oh, when it's, when lose. Yes, yes. So it'll be up next week. Yes, they're going to win today. No, no problem. West Ham knocked Notts County out in the last round. Harrier's manager, Graham Orner, was there to check on the opposition, and he's certainly in confident mood. This isn't the sort of game you have sleepless nights about. It's a, the sort of game that you enjoy and uh, obviously uh, you look forward to. And uh, we've got nothing to lose. We've got absolutely nothing to lose. We, we can only gain from this game. Um, I think if anybody was going to have sleepless nights, it would be the West Ham camp. The newspapers have certainly had their money's worth, and with only seven Premier League sides left in the competition, you wonder whether the story is set to run and run. A final point, is it silly to think that you could make it to the FA Cup semi-final? Yes, it's very silly, um, but this is a very silly FA Cup this season, so who knows? It's certainly that, and you know and I know from experience that what West Ham need is strong, strong nerves. It's strong happening. nerves and big hearts, but... The Twin Towers and Saint, you know, the fifth round is the time you start thinking, if we can get over this tie and then we get the winners of that tie in the next round, sometimes that can be fatal because you start complacent, but I don't think West Ham will start complacent today. I think they've got a great opportunity to go right to the semi-final, and I think they'll be too strong for Kidderminster. So you don't think Kidderminster is the first non-league side in the sixth round? Sorry. <laughs>